the concept of sustainable development has been in the public domain for over 20 years. Despite being embedded into a range of development agendas at various levels, it still remains elusive and has not succeeded in generating enough momentum to challenge the existing hold of the capitalist growth model of development. However, today, heightening natural disasters and climate change has increased the sense of urgency to rethink development as one that integrates environmental sustainability into the equation. This is not a straightforward equation, but one with multiple realities, perceptions and forces at play. You know, the question was, uh, should we safeguard environment for environment's own sake? And I'm going to say no. No. We should conserve the environment for our sake. It's a very selfish thing to say, but at the same time, the environment and the ecosystems and the planet can, can look after themselves. We are the problem. And, and I think now that we've, we've got into the act and, and made things particularly bad in, in some respects, uh, it's uh, threatening our survival and it's in our enlightened self-interest to, to do something about it. Every infrastructure in, in, in the developed world has, is depreciate, depreciating every year, except the environment. Environment is the value of the environment is increasing every day if you manage well. And that will, of course, help to all the development activities. But we are looking at the land, water, and air. Without all three, these three things, there is no e development at all. So we need to treat those things and the ecosystems as an infrastructure for the development purposes. Then we have a sort of a self-respecting, self-governance system. Okay, these are the part of things that our system is running. Every industry, private sector is actually should think about in these lines. You know, uh, water we have to think about as an infrastructure, the ecosystems as infrastructure that are supplying raw materials for growth. But that mindset is not there yet. When we talk about uh, limits to growth, many people would think about uh, it as a separate alternative or something optional. But uh, according to the theories of sustainability, uh, we have to say that it's a must. I mean, limits to growth is a must, not an option. Actually, this can be also uh, described uh, using another uh, kind of a wholesome concept, uh, which is called the Spaceship Earth, uh, which was described by Kenneth Boulding, a uh, Nobel laureate economist. Uh, so he was describing that the human beings in this world should be behaving as uh, people who are traveling in a spaceship. So within a spaceship, there is a limited amount of air, limited amount of water, limited amount of food. So you have to use these resources very carefully, otherwise you'll be in trouble. We're talking about people who don't have access to adequate food, water, health facilities, education, whatever. So, so we need to do something about it. So delivery of, you know, that material services that they need has to be done through some means and the world right now thinks the GDP growth in those countries are the way to do that. That's the most pragmatic approach right now we know of. Can we question that? I guess not. Uh, I think we all agree that you know it is not fair uh, to let 
let them not get into a certain level of development. But then the question is, if the two billion, you know, get it to a level of whether they may agree or not, whether the rest of the world agree to a satisfactory level, do we have actually the, the, the resources for us to continue the rest of the three billion or whatever the plus uh, people to live like this and further and the two billion to come to a certain level. But that's the big question around us. People's expectation, poverty reduction, is consists of two things, material and it's about relational. Acquiring material and relational uh, you know, um, uh, benefits. Human is about your strength, your uh, ability to, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, negotiate your, uh, your ability to basically interact with people, empowerment. Societal is the so link between uh, people and it also exp expand to areas such as uh, how the communities are formed, minorities, majorities, uh, uh, to which societies you belong, churches or whatever, your friends, that sort of thing. So everywhere there is a subjective element here, right? So if we are to, uh, you know, kind of make limits to this, you know, at least to this, right, and make people perceive that they are happy with the limits, limited amount of uh, material wealth, I think we need to probably look at how we are going to influence people's subjective perception on what we have. We are criticizing the global north that you are going in the wrong direction. You, you need to Limit this, you need to change the direction. And in addition, we are saying that, well, we need to have our own space. So we are following your path. While saying them to change the path, we are following the same path. That's why we are asking for environmental space. I think we need to question this. Because we come up with this conclusion, believing that there is a doubt that these limits are actually existing or not. If by any chance, this limits are not there, then we will be progressing anyway in the economic front or something like that. So because, I mean, though we are saying that this is, this is a global crisis, environmental crisis, ecological crisis, all these things, while saying that we are right, fighting for our own right to pollute. So if you change the direction, then we can visualize other things that can happen. In our discussions, we know uh, very well the solution. Uh, maybe there are uh, differences of opinion, but you know, still there is a kind of agreement of what kind of a world we can, you know, think of uh, achieving to solve this. But what is missing is uh, how we are moving from here to the world we are suggesting. Who is the agent? Maybe those are the kind of, you know, uh, agents I can think of if we, if we need to, you know, break this deadlock and move forward. We have gone through four basic uh, revolutions, the humankind starting from agricultural, industrial, and now we are in a biotechnology uh, revolution, or technological revolution, all driven at finding solutions 
to our problems without really addressing the, the fundamental problem, which is a growing population and also uh, driven by consumerism. So I think this whole idea of limits is, is I do question about it, whether it is possible for us to achieve it. You simply have to look at carbon limits that we have imposed, Kyoto Protocol and all that. What we are once again trying to do is we are going to use international conventions to continue our way of life by buying somebody else's stuff. So basically, uh, we are not limiting us, but we are sort of finding mechanisms to work around those limits. But for how long? This planet. Uh, it's not going to go back to what it was. There is no going back. It's a continuum. Uh, if we disappear tomorrow, somebody else will take over and the planet will continue. It has been there for four and a half billion years and we have been here only for 100,000 years. Uh, only thing is, what is the planet that we would like to have? That is the question, I think. Uh, I mean, as long as we are here, like the house that we live in, it's one day is going to break down. But un while you're living there, how do you want that thing to be? While poverty reduction lies at the heart of development, it is often the first casualty of unsustainability, with the poor disproportionately reliant on natural assets and vulnerable to shocks involving climate and scarcity. With increasing critique on the current growth-centered development model for being the main driver of unsustainability, most visibly in developed countries, but increasingly also in emerging economies, there is growing acceptance around the world that it is time that the very development goals we have come to know should be revamped or more likely reimagined. This is the debate that is presently taking place. What will the post-2015 development goals contain? What is the future we want for our children? How do we add sustainability as the next metric of development in a meaningful way? <laughs>